Hey, this is Ryan from Spiker Workshop, and we now offer several upgrade kits for this tank. It's the M5 Stewart. It's one sixth scale, and they used to sell this way back in the day at Walmart. Um, you can still get them around on eBay, and there's there's so many out there that I I found it worthwhile to do this whole upgrade. And here's a the tracks here. They're they're injection molded in Delrin plastic so they're like ridiculously strong these things are not going to break under the power of this tank like there's no way I actually warranty these on my website if you ever break a link I'll send you ones for free um, doesn't cover normal wear and tear though on them um, so the, the the basics of the tracks here are they're a lot more scale they actually have the scale track guides unlike the stock ones these stock tracks had such a small amount of plastic here, they'd break all the time. And they had a very small track guide, so it would always skip off the wheels of the tank, and the, you know, the tracks would fall off all the time. Um, these ones are... They're, also, these ones didn't look scale, like the real tank. That's not what these look like. This is what they look like on the real tank. And mine... The pads here are plastic, even though on the real tank they're rubber, but it's just uh, beyond my capabilities to do rubber molding here. Um, but the plastic ones have a benefit that they're a lot easier on the transmission because they're flat and kind of slick, but you know, the, the tank can still do decent off-roading and stuff. Um, but they're also solid, so that the tracks that I sell are about two and a half pounds total. So I think it's, yeah, it's a little over a pound each track. They just have a lot more scale weights to them. And then they're set up so on this side you see the end of the screw, but on the other side you actually countersink these connectors. And then when you put it on the tank, like I have these ones already installed, you have this end face the inside just so you don't see it as clearly. And you could always paint those too if you want. Um, and physically, they're they're like the exact same size as the stock ones. Um, I sell a sprocket because the stock ones had a lot of stuff in the way, so my track guides like hit everything on the stock stuff. So if you're interested in putting these tracks on your tank you have to get my sprocket kit, my return wheel kit, and um, or well this this comes with the tracks but there's a, a small idler wheel piece that you put on but that's included with the tracks so it's three items that you gotta buy. Um, I split them up though because if you just want a more scale sprocket you can still use the stock tracks on the sprocket However, you can't use the stock one on the return wheels because I don't have that groove in the middle. Um, so yeah, to, to start assembling the tracks, there's really not that much to it. Your pads will require a little bit of cleanup, which is easy. If you just take an X-Acto knife and just go down the edge like this, um, this Delrin flashing cleans up like really quick and easy. And then they're they're already drilled because of the way I make my molds the they're cast with these holes already and then right now I don't have the mold for this um, with the countersink in them but I might in the future so for now you're gonna have to drill and countersink um, so when you start assembling them you'll take your connectors and split them up into two equal piles and then Half of the connectors you'll drill with a 3 30 seconds drill bit. Um, it'll be a smaller diameter. That way when you screw into here it will thread in. And then on the other half you'll use a 1 8 inch drill and countersink it. That way it's, it's free spinning. Um, and then once you have all that done, really all you do is you, you put it through and then um, screw it on and do that like I believe it's it's 66 links for each side 
Another thing to note on the trackpad is there's two ejector pin marks on one side. So it's, it's a good idea to have the smooth side facing down and put all those ejector marks on the inside like I did on my tracks here. See there's nothing on the top but they're all on the inside there. I never actually made a assembly guide like I did for my Sherman kits just because these are really easy. Um, I still used a, a power drill though to screw them in but you can see it doesn't really take that much force to get them on unlike the Sherman ones were actually a lot more difficult. Yeah, and then you just do that until you have the whole tracks assembled. So to prepare the tank to put all these upgrades on, I'll start with the idler and just show you how to do this one. So I took all the idler stuff off the tank. It's just a few screws. And then I also took off the return wheels. So what you want to do is this part that comes in the track kit will replace the cover for this but you have to make some modifications here and and cut basically about a whole inch of this off so you're gonna cut use maybe a dremel or a saw and cut off about an inch of this stuff and you can use this as reference you, you want this to fit over that in place of that and then also you're gonna want to trim off these three hubs where the return wheels go on but leave on this like circular part that's down here but use a dremel cut these off and then make it flat to that that surface there so here I've cleaned up those parts I've cut off all those nubs and this area here um, I might need to shave a little bit more off or no that works so I'll focus on the idler first here so all we do is um, put this approximately where it's supposed to go on that screw and then take a 1 8 drill bit while you're holding this here and go right through the hole. So before screwing the part on, we're going to put similar to how the, the original setup was now the spring's under a little bit more tension because it's you know shorter but the suspension never really worked that well in the back so it doesn't actually matter that much um, I'm going to hold this down while I screw in this and then I'll go ahead and screw in the rest of that here you can see the inside there's just enough room to get a needle nose pliers down in here to get the lock nut on and then once that's installed then it's it's basically the exact same as the original where you just put all this back together um, the main reason for doing this is the track guides they hit the old one because it was flush with the top of the wheel here uh, but this this now gives it enough clearance for the guides to easily roll by there so the return wheels are pretty simple I'll show you how to put, put them together before you put them on the hull um, first thing is you're gonna have to clean up a little bit of support material um, for the most part it like just breaks off and this allows the the track guide to actually flow behind here it's as close to the original as I could get it you know just from limited pictures and stuff online and then um, well I'll show you once we get there but first thing I want to do is glue this part in the wheel um, I'll just show you what it looks like before I glue it in here. And it's a pretty tight fit just from the layer layers of the printing. But that way there's a, a recess in there without any support material and everything's flat. Um, but I'm going to use some glue to glue that in there. So I have um, three of them glued up, but the kit comes with six because the whole tank uses six of them. But I'm just doing half the side in the video here. Um, so the next thing is these little spokes we're going to um, screw onto here. But just to make sure that they're, they're uh, free spinning, I'm going to use an eighth inch drill bit on all of them just to clean up any little debris and then screw those on. 
So there you have those screwed on and they should be able to freely spin. And then what these do is it allows you to just press fit the tire on here. So then when it's on the hull, it hides the screw and the track guides will not let it ever fall off. Also the layer lines kind of make it lock in there. Um, and then the, the next thing is on the back side of these parts, um, you can either clean off, because there's support material here. So once you have the support material cleaned up, this is what it should look like. And then you might want to clean up and touch up around this uh, circle area here. Make sure everything is below that height. And then on the bottom there's a little notch, so you can line up that bottom notch here. And it should fit tight against the hull like that, and make sure that the track guide is aligned, you know, so the track can ride through it. Um, and then it's up to you how you want to attach these. I just super glued to the other side, but you could scrape some of the paint off and then use some ABS glue for these. But I, I found that just this uh, thick super glue and some accelerator was plenty. Um, the way I did the other side was putting some around the rim like this, and then on that top edge, and then a big blob kind of in the middle. And then accelerator spray the wheel, and then push it down and quick line it up with that part, and then just hold it for a little while. And I'll do that to all three of them here. So you can see I have all three of them glued on. And then, um, so these wheels are easily removable, so I'll just push them on here like this. And then I'll probably take them back off when I paint them. And then just maybe probably just spray paint. Um, so I, I would at least, if you paint before you install these, just don't paint the bottom side. Otherwise the super glue is sticking to paint instead of the plastic. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and start on the sprocket. So the sprocket kit on my website comes with both sprockets for that price. And in here, this is just one of them I'm going to show you because I already put the other one on the tank. Um, but these are the parts you'll get times two. And it's it's quite a lot of gluing to get them ready to, to be painted and then put on the tank. Um, you can kind of do it in any order. Um, but what you get here is there's a bunch of little dots that are actually like the scale bolts and I separated them from the part just so I could print it flat on the surface like this um, but the first step would be to to flip these over to the smooth side and then I'm gonna glue on those bolts um, they go like right here so on each one of these I'll put one it's kind of right towards the bottom like that and then I'll kind of quick overview it and then I'll, I'll show you the end result. So after you get those bolts on, you can glue this part on here. And you can see that one side is kind of curved. So I'm going to put the smooth side up. And then this, this is critical to make sure that these are lined up. So if you look, there's six spokes and I believe 14 um, teeth on here. I think that's, oh yeah, and we have to remove that support material. We'll do that in a second. Um, but one of these spokes lines up with a tooth on the other side. Some of the spokes are not aligned. So you want to find the one that's aligned to a tooth and then use that as a reference point when you glue this on. Um, use this spoke here to line up the center of the tooth, you know, that lines up with the one across it. Um, and then once you glue that on, then these uh, recessed areas here will get glued onto here, just like that. And then you just kind of center it. And then when you go to, to uh, glue on the second one, you'll want to take more time to make sure that it's actually lined up. Um, you can do that uh, by kind of setting it on the table and, you know, you have to feel for it, for where it's actually lined up. Um, and then also we have to clear, clean off the support material. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do all those things. 
So here I have everything glued together, so you can see what the final product looks like. Um, I was using some ABS glue. It's really thin stuff, um, but the way that I printed this, it's like flat areas on flat areas, so it does work pretty well. And I'd recommend for sure using some kind of ABS glue because um, otherwise it won't be as strong because the sprocket's moving around so much and it's this is under quite a lot of force from the, the hex drive and everything. Um, and then just make sure, like I, I put a lot of extra in there just to make sure it, it, it kind of melts it together, you know. And then the next thing is I cleaned off that support material on the bottom. You want to make sure that this is um, flat without any nubs sticking up. Um, and then the, the kit comes with a total of four of these, so you have two spares in case one gets rounded out over time. But it's it's a lot thicker than the stock one, so and it's it's a stronger ABS. At least it feels like it to me. Um, but you you got four screws here. I also have there's eight holes, so if it does get worn out, you can use the other hole set. You know even if if this gets worn out, um, but before you screw this in, you might want to use a file um, about the same size as the hex. Uh, do it, do like a test fit on the shaft of the tank to see if it if it works or not, because um, it it might be printed a little bit tight, but that's okay because then you can can make it a little bit looser. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint some stuff before I put it on the tank. And then these these caps you'll want to paint also, but I wouldn't put these on yet. These are after the sprocket is installed. These covers will just click into place. Um, and then, yeah, just like that. You might want to test fit these also before you put them on the tank because you don't want them to fit too tight because then it will be a pain to get them off if you need to. These are a little bit too tight. Um, but they should be loose enough so, to where you can get a knife edge in there to pop them out. Um, that'll just be some touch-up work and stuff after everything's painted. So I got everything painted and ready to assemble, and it's pretty much just like the stock setup from this point. Um, I'll use the same screw that came with this. Um, you know, I'll just um, so just one thing to note is make sure that those screw heads are facing inside the tank, so you don't see them on the outside. And then I'll put the sprocket on the track and then load it on all at the same time and screw it together. And here I have it all assembled with that cap pushed in there. Um, everything looks a lot more scale than the stock one. And like the idler spring still works. It just has a little bit more tension than the old one. But I don't think the weight of the vehicle ever made that work anyways. And then also those return wheels are just held on by super glue. But it's enough to, you know what I mean, I can't see that breaking. So in the future, depending on, on how popular these upgrades are, I will probably look at doing other things, like maybe um, better transmissions, or working uh, barrel elevation and turret rotation, and possibly also doing a new wheel set, because the real wheels didn't have this groove in them. Um, so, yeah, leave some comments, tell me what you guys think, and thanks for watching.